Hello friends and students, welcome to Career360. Today we confront a striking reality. As China's universities rise rapidly in global research and ranks, India faces a critical choice. In the latest Stanford University's top 2% scientists list, the gap between India and China's academic impact is both revealing and urgent. China's universities have surged fueled by intensive investment in research and development, leading to an unmatched presence in global rankings and high-impact publications. In contrast, Indian institutions, despite producing exceptional minds, struggle with funding, infrastructure and global visibility. This comparison is not just about numbers. It's a look at how prioritizing research can redefine a nation's future. It is a fervent call for India to reevaluate its commitment to fostering academic and scientific innovation. It's a plea to the powers that be that India is far from achieving its potential unless we invest a lot more in research. Let us look at all these things through some numbers. Now let us look at the top 2% scientist list that Stanford University has put forward, right? China, in all the top 2% is about 2,17,097 are the total scientists that we have in the world who are the top 2%, right? Of this, 10,687 scientists come from China. That is about 4.92% of the total world top 2% scientists. Where does India stand? India has 2,939 scientists, which is 1.35% of the top 2% scientists in the world. Both the countries have been growing. India, in fact, in 2020 was having 1.1% of the total uh, uh, scientists, top 2% scientists, which now has grown to 1.35%. So it's a decent growth, growth of about 20% over the last uh, five years. But China was on 6,943, which jumped to 10,687. And when you put that in perspective, they grown by about 50%. So the China's growth, despite having a larger base, is far better than what you have for India, which was operating with a smaller base over the last five years. Now, let us look at another set of numbers. If you look at, again, the institutions, why does India actually lose out? Because the number of institutions that are contributing to the top 2% scientists is very limited as far as India is concerned, and the largely public institutions. There is not a single private institution that is there. Of course, it is headed by or led by Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, which is the primary research institute in the country that we have. It has 133 of its scientists figuring in the top 2% list. It is followed by Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi with 102, and then IIT Kharagpur, IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, IIT Kanpur, Roorkee, and so on and so forth. And Jadavpur University, which is a state university in West Bengal, also is a part of that list with 41 of scientists being a part of the top 2% scientists in the world. But overall, if you look at this list of top 10 universities, which have the best scientists that are working in, in the country who are also a part of the top 2% scientists list, that all of them are public institutions with not a single private institution that is there. And that should be a cause of concern for us. The other thing that we wanted to understand is, okay, if you're doing research, if, you're doing, if you have the best scientists, what are they actually researching in? In engineering, China has 1,893 of its scientists up there. India has only 418, right? That's a four and a half times, you know, that China has a lead over us. In ICT, it is 1,353 for China and 242 for India. In chemistry, 1,457 for China and 413 for India. Biology, 186 for China and 111. Here, we're trying to compete slightly closer and in biomedical. So in biology, biomedical, pharmacy, India seems to be at least you know, be half of what China is, but in every other field, India is very, very far ahead, far behind. And that should be of concern because ultimately, unless you start researching diverse fields and not focused on a few things, which is pharmacy, ICT and those kind of things, we'll always be struggling to compete and achieve our true potential. Then we started, wanted to understand why is this the case? You know, is there a problem in terms of the funding that happens, right? So to understand why India lags behind in research and development, we wanted to look at what's the kind of spend or investment that the country makes on research and development, right? In 1995, India was spending 0.65% of its total, you know, GDP on research and development. China was at lag lagging far behind at 0.57%. Now, why we are talking of GDP as a percentage of GDP? Because we'll come to the absolute numbers much later. But the first understanding of the kind of investment is from the GDP. If the, the scale of the economy or the scale of the country is lesser, obviously you'll spend lesser. So absolute numbers don't make sense, right? So we wanted to understand from that perspective. 
But by the time we went to 2022, China from 0.57 in 1995 grew to 2.44%. It almost quadrupled. Where did India go? India grew from 2.65% to 0.66%. So it stagnated in a sense, right? While China quadrupled its investment as a percentage of GDP in research and development, India almost stagnated. The last number that we have, India spent about $22 billion uh, in, 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 uh, in science, research and development, whereas China was spending $438 billion. And that is a stark difference that China spends 2.4%, India spends 0.7% of GDP. The total amount of money now that we're talking of, which China spends, is about $545 billion. And India spends just about $27, $28 billion. That is 19 times in, you know, is what China spends as compared to India and that should shock all of us. Now we went to the next level. We said, is it because the government of India doesn't spend or is it that the institutions are not researching well? One of the things that China really, really takes lead is the number of its own private companies that are actually investing in research and development. Right. There is a list which is the top two and a half thousand global R&D spenders in the world which is created by, uh, you know, WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Pro Property Organization. And this data, when, it, when they compiled the data, China had 301 of its companies in the top 2,500 global R&D spenders. India has only 26 of them. And more importantly, the companies that are spending on R&D in India are largely pharmaceutical companies, automotive companies and software companies. Whereas in China, it is very, very diverse extremely diverse. So the broader industry connect that China has ensures that R&D is spent all over in a very diverse field and because of it, it, is, it prospers far better than what we have in India. Now all this obviously has an impact on how the universities perform because all of you would know that a good university also has a very very good research uh, potential and they also their academics, their faculty all and researchers, uh, scientists do also have very very good research. So we started looking at okay if all this is happening then does it have an impact on the kind of universities that these countries generate or the kind of universities that these countries actually own where the, the students actually go, uh, go, go for the learning. In China, and we started looking at different rankings that the world has to understand how India uh, compares to China in terms of the best universities that uh, uh, both the countries have. In the QS ranking, India has in 2025, in the top 500 universities, India has 11 of them. China has 33 of them. But if you move beyond QS ranking and start looking at the other rankings, this gap is much more starker. The THE ranking, which is the Times Higher Education ranking that you have, it is one of the most reputed rankings that you have in the world. In the top 500 universities, India, there is only one of them in 2024. There is five in 2023. So possibly some of the universities stop participating in these rankings. But there is only one university in the top 500 as far as THE ranking is concerned from India. But from China, you have 31 of them. The other ranking that you have is the Academic Research uh, World University Ranking, which is actually also called the Sh Shanghai Index. Now, this is created by China, so obviously there is possibility that China has an unfair advantage in this. But in this, in the top 500, India has only one, whereas China has 103 universities in the top 500 universities in the world. But again, I'm, as I said, it's also the Shanghai Ranking, they call it. So, we'll ignore that for a moment and move to the next one. So, the next one we thought we'll go to is the US News of the World Rankings. Uh, you know the US News creates this, uh, it's got a very, very good uh, understanding of the education space and they also do a ranking of uh, the best universities in the world for the US citizens. There, India has about 140 in the top 2,250 institutions. Now, China has 422 of them. In fact, the 140 that I'm talking of is of the entire list. It's possibly 81 what I understand. But China has 422 of them and uh, India has 140 in the total list and possibly 81 of the top 2,250. Now, if I go to the next one, which is URAP, it, it, it's another ranking that is done around the globe. Of the top 3,000 universities that are ranked globally, India has only 103 of them. China has 489 of them. So, of the top 3,000 universities, China has 489 universities and China tops the list. Nature Index, which is globally the most acknowledged and most credible of the research rankings that you have, in the top 100 rising institutions, 
from India, only one IIT Madras was there. But from China, there are 75 of them in the top 100 rising institutions. So very, very clearly, it's not that China is spending a lot, doing a lot and performing a lot. But in terms of its growth potential also, you'll realize that China is investing a lot more that new universities are coming up, which are really, really topping the charts in terms of its science, its research and development, in terms of encouraging scientists, because of which the best universities also seem to be coming from China as compared to India. One of the things that we must remember always is that research is dependent on the kind of academic freedom that a country has. Now, it is not actually true for China, but it is true for many other countries around the globe. Uh, China, there is very less academic freedom, but they seem to be topping the world because it is powered by a lot of money backing science and research. As I said, about $545 billion being spent on research and development is a fantastic amount of money. So even if you control it, you'll still be able to you know, achieve a larger impact. But in the world over, when you actually have greater academic freedom, the research is much more evolved and much more diverse. Now, the academic freedom index is something that scores the freedom that academics have to do their own research. And that academic freedom index was 0.65 out of a score of 1, as far as India is concerned, in 2010. But it's been consistently following. In 2024, that academic freedom index is now 0.38. To put things in perspective, US is about 0 0.75, 0 0.79 or some such number. In fact, our academic freedom index is far lesser than Saudi Arabia also, which has a better score than what we have. And this decline reflects, reflects growingly on the restrictions on ac academic autonomy and campus integrity that we have in the country. The, as I said, the maximum index is 1 and we are at 0 0.38 at this point in time. Now, if you look at this whole thing, you also realize one more thing that possibly Indian universities are starved of funds. There is less funding. There is less infrastructure for pursuing it, you know, research and to en enable scientists to pursue what they actually are there for, which is re research development and pursuing science. Now, if you and here what we did was we listed out the top three universities in China with the kind of funding that they have and with the kind of corpus that they created. By the way, the highest corpus that in India we have is in Indian Institute of Science, which I, I think has a corpus of about 400 to 500 million dollars, right? That's the kind of fund that they work, work in, in terms of ensuring that their people, uh, you know, pursue research uh, and innovation. But if you look at China, the Tsinghua University, which is established in 1911, 1911 it has an endowment of about 6 billion dollars, right? It's about 15 times of what you know, a Indian Institute of Science has. The Peking University has an estimated endowment of about $3 billion. The Zhejiang University has a roughly estimate of about $2 billion. So the kind of funds that these universities, the Chinese universities have at their disposal to ensure that their people pursue science, research and innovation is far, far bigger than what you have in, in our country. Because obviously as a country which is, you know, has limited resources and which has to ensure that we use our resources very very optimally maybe we're not able to fund some of the research that we have but it def definitely shows a very very stark contrast between what china is able to achieve by investing in research and development and in research in, sci in their scientists as compared to what india does because india is spending about 0.7 percent of its gdp on research and china is spending 2.4 percent but more importantly when you put them into numbers perspective china is spending about 545 billion dollars on research and development whereas india is spending about 28 billion dollars now all these things will have their own impact if you look at the kind of growth that china has over the last 30 years since it's accelerated its investment in science and uh, research and development you'll suddenly realize why china is where it is today the growth of china happened in the last three decades because it was backed by huge investments in science, research and development, whereas India possibly because of its social issues that we are getting, uh, you know, we are facing, you know, we somewhere stagnated in, in terms of our, uh, our research spending, we just 0.65% earlier of a percent of, of the GDP and now it's about 0.7%. We are stagnating and that is where as an economy also we are very, very difficult in terms of, you know, achieving our true potential of what India should be at some point in time. So what does all this comparison and all this data mean to India? India's journey to harness its full potential hinges on a decisive, bold investment in research and development. We are a nation rich with a demographic dividend. Millions of young minds filled with ideas, innovation and untapped creativity. But potential alone is not enough. It needs the right support, funding and infrastructure to flourish. If we want India to emerge as a global leader, if we truly envision a future where Indian talent shapes the world, then investing in R&D is not an option. It is a necessity.
Let's empower our young scientists, engineers and thinkers with the tools that they need. Only then can India move from potential to unparalleled achievement, from dreams to a reality that the world will not only respect but also look up to. Thank you so much. Namaskar.